Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the approach to equilibrium, which we use in terms of Q instead of K. So one of the things we need to do when we do these equilibrium calculations is predict which way the reaction's going. Whether it goes to the right or goes to the left will affect whether we use plus X, minus X, whatever. It's a useful thing to know how to do. So how do we do this? So we define the reaction quotient, we call it, which is Q. You can have Q in terms of concentration or in terms of pressure, no problem, just like K. And so this is the exact same thing as the equilibrium constant K, except you plug into it non-equilibrium concentrations. So that's the big difference here, right? The form of Q, the form of K, they're pretty much the same for any given reaction. It's just whether you're at equilibrium or initial or wherever you are in the reaction. That's what's different. So it's a pretty straightforward thing, right? It's just easy to confuse and lose track of when you want to use each one. So Q is valid all the time. K is valid only at equilibrium. When you're at equilibrium, Q is equal to K. Feel free to replay that a couple times to get it to sink in because it's something that people tend to mess up. So here's a little plot, right? Over time, as you approach equilibrium from the non-equilibrium state, whatever it is, your Q will work its way towards being equal to K, whatever that value is. And so yeah, when Q is at K, your reaction's at equilibrium. Now when Q is less than K, that means your denominator is too big, right? If this is big, that's gonna make Q small, and that'll be less than K. So that means in order to fix it, you need to make less of this and you need to make more of this to bring Q equal to K. So that means your reaction is going to proceed forward to the right. It's going to make products and react away reactants until Q is equal to K. Again, the kinetics of this process, I'm not getting into that, how long it takes to get there, but it'll get there eventually. Now the inverse is true when Q is bigger than K, right? So if Q is bigger, then your numerator is too big and your denominator is too small. And you do that by making this smaller, so you make less products and you make more reactants. And so when, when that's happening, you're making more reactants, you're moving to the left. You're making more reactants, you're getting rid of products in order to bring this back so that Q equals K. So you could just straight memorize these things, right? What happens when Q is bigger? What happens when Q is smaller? Or you can practice and get used to the logic here. You look at the equation and be like, Oh yeah, if I need to make Q to match K, Q is bigger than K, that means Q needs to go down. What needs to happen to this to make Q get smaller? Then you can think of it that way too. That's usually what I do, because I'm never going to remember the this greater than that, whatever jazz. So I think of it with the equation, but feel free to do whatever you want to do. This is something you need to know how to do, is to predict which direction the reaction is going to go. So here's an example. We have the reaction up here. We give you the equilibrium constant at some temperature. Now, at that same temperature, here's the concentrations of everything. Is this at equilibrium? If not, which way is it going? So, since we don't know if we're at equilibrium or not, we're going to label this Q, and the form of the equilibrium or Q constant expression is SO3, the product, squared because of the stoichiometric coefficient, divided by the reactants, and then you square the SO2 because it has a coefficient of 2. So I'm going to plug these concentrations in and solve for Q. Now, looking at this, huh, Q is less than K. 10 to the fifth is less than 10 to the sixth. So we need to make Q bigger, which means we need to make more products and less reactants, which means we need to shift this reaction to the right. So there's the logic for that. Q is less than K. The reaction is going to go to the right. And there you go. So then that answered the question that we have here. And then as this reaction shifts to the right, Q will equal K eventually, and then it will be at equilibrium. All right, so this is something you need to know how to do. Again, here's a couple shortcuts. If any product is zero, that means the reaction is going to go to the right to make the product non-zero. If you start with zero at equilibrium, for anything with a reasonable equilibrium constant, you're going to have some products. So that means you're going to have to force this to the right. Another way to think of this, right, is that if Q is zero, K is going to be some sort of positive number, so Q needs to increase in order to make K, which involves making products. On the flip side, if the reactant is zero, if you, like, put just products into your reaction vessel and want to see what happens, 
the reaction's going to go to the left to make the reactant's concentrations not zero. And so, you know, this proceeds to the left for the same mathematical logic, and you can think of it that way. So if you got zeros, your reaction is going to shift in order to fill in the zeros with something. And so it'll shift towards that direction. It's a useful shortcut, which comes in handy a lot, actually, because often we'll just mix reactants together, and where's it going to go? It's going to go to the right. Cool. And so that's all we have for this video. Again, a short little video, but something that's really important. So take the time to know it, and you'll be fine. Thanks for watching.